So hello and welcome to another Nothing But Football interview, this time with current Luton Town and former Saints, Pompey, Borough and Blades defender Martin Craney. So firstly, how are you, Martin? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. It's great to have you on the show. Uh, and as always, it will be split into two parts. So we'll, we'll be talking about the career, your career in the first part, and then we'll move on to the second part with some quickfire questions and, of course, the quiz. So if you want to get started, Alex... Yeah, so uh, Martin, first of all, uh, as we knew you were coming on, uh, we watched the game last night. Uh, you know, we're lucky, unlucky to concede late on, um, yeah. but, you know, it's probably not a bad point, really. Millwall have been on all right form, uh, and you've probably proved that you have enough to stay away from a relegation battle. How do you feel it went? Um, the game was all right. Um, I think first half, we, we were probably the better team. Got pinned back in the second. As you say, never, it's never nice conceding the 95th minute, but... Overall, we'll take a point after getting beat on Saturday, you know, getting a point back on the board and then we can move on to this Saturday. But in terms of the old season, I think it's gone OK. We've probably not done as well since Christmas than we were, were doing before Christmas. Um, but I'm pretty sure we'll have enough to, to stay up in the season. Yeah. Uh, so, so we'll just move on sort of to, to your former career now. Uh, and you made your professional debut for Southampton against the Chelsea squad that contain the likes of Frank Lampard, John Terry, Claude Makaleli. But talk us through the feeling of making your, your debut against a side that obviously went on to be the champions of the league the following season. It was, um, it was a strange one because I wasn't actually meant to be in the squad that day. So I think I've been away with um, the under-19 Southampton. I can't remember if we had a game or something a couple of days before. Um, and then I'd come into training and the manager said, look, you're travelling with the squad. So I had no idea I was actually going to start at the time. Um, and then I think it was the night before he, he was just saying to me like jokingly are you, you ready to play tomorrow and obviously I'm saying yeah of course of course I am thinking alright yeah I might be on the bench maybe got up in the morning done the done the team stuff he had the team up on the board and my name was on that and I was like he wasn't joking there I'm starting and he, he started me at left wing back and I'd never played there before my whole career and I was like What's he doing there? He started me against Chelsea at left wing back. But anyway, I was just I was over the moon excited, you know, ringing everyone saying, "Look, I'm starting today." Blah blah blah. Um, obviously, it was overwhelming when I got in. I'd never played in front of that many fans before. Um, so the game actually went okay. I thought you were going to mention it in a minute. Obviously, I scored own goal. <laughs> uh, after about sixty minutes, which obviously I was gutted. It was one of them. The ball come in front post, someone sort of jumped in front, it flicked off me and went in. It was, it was a bit unlucky, to be fair. But uh, yes, I mean, it was it was a debut to remember in a way for me because I'll, I'll never forget it due to that either. Um, but over, the overall experience, it was brilliant. Um, loved every minute of it. I think I played about 70 minutes in the end and come off. But um, as you said, the whole day was brilliant. Yeah, so um, obviously you made, you, you were in and out of the Southampton team and then, 06, 07, uh, you played the semi-finals against Derby. Uh, but that happened to be your only appearance of the season. So how did you go from being like a fringe player who was, you know, out on loan to starting in the most important game of the season? Was that down to your progress? Was it down to injuries? Or? I think I had a little bit to do with everything. Um, obviously, I'd been out on loan a lot and come back. And I think there was a few injuries. There was a few bits and bobs going on with contracts and stuff like that. So I hadn't been involved. But I think it come to that game and... It was sort of he's going to have to play me really. Um, so I've played that game. I've done, done pretty well in the game, um, and after that, it, we sort of both decided it was better if I sort of part ways after that. And mm. when I moved to, to Portsmouth, mm. and you know, like you say, that summer you made the move from Southampton to Portsmouth. I mean, it's it's something that not many people have done, and it is a bold move, especially at such a young age. Um, but how much of a part did did Harry Redknapp? Uh, play in that and, and what was he like sort of as a person and as a manager yeah like he obviously had a massive part because I'd, I'd spent a lot of time under him at Southampton and probably because I want uh, you say like a, a well-known name when I was, I was that young um, the move sort of went under the radar it wasn't like a big big fuss about it you know because it's quite a big rivalry but because I was fairly unknown it just sort of flew under um, and I spoke to Harry in that summer and he said look I'd love to get you down here. Um, we've got one right back. I think it was Loren at the time. And he said, he's getting on a bit. So you come in, progress and, and, and you'll play. 
so we had a massive part in, in, in swapping over, but obviously it was close, didn't have to move or anything, so it was quite easy for me at the time to do. Uh, went in and then there you go, I'm in a big squad of names again. I'm a bit overwhelmed at the time, but settled in pretty quickly there. I think I actually started the season uh, Portsmouth for that year. <laughs> and then about two weeks later, they signed Glenn Johnson, so <laughs> sort of got pushed back down again. I mean, I've just got to chip in on that. You like you say you played with Laurent and obviously with the likes of Sol Campbell and Carno. I mean, I'm a, I'm a massive Arsenal fan. Um, yeah. So, obviously, I've, I've watched that Invincible season over enough times. I've seen them. Obviously, I was, I was too young to watch them at the time, but I've watched them back. I mean, what were they like to play with? Yeah, brilliant. And obviously, you from watching play outside, you see them on the TV. And they're just... I was, I was a boy walking into a man's change room and then they'd all been there, done it, you know. Um, so Campbell was sort of coming to the end when he was at Portsmouth, but there was there was people like him, Sylvan Distan, um, Herman Horidas and Glenn Johnson. There was all these like big names who played in the Prem for years sort of thing. So there was no one else better to learn from for me uh, than them. But obviously it made it a lot harder for me to get into that team because of the, the quality of the team now. Yeah, uh, so your first start for Portsmouth, you know, if you, if your Southampton debut was a baptism of fire, then I don't know what you can call this because you mm. played 45 minutes against Man United that had Nani and Cristiano Ronaldo on either wing. <laughs> what what was going through your head? Uh, do you know, I actually played against uh, Ronaldo when I was at Southampton, so I would got a taste of it then. Um, but yeah, as you said, I started and they were on the wings and I was just thinking, God, like, again for the debut I don't need a team like this it's just give me someone who's in the bottom of the league or something um, what was the score in that game do you know well, oh, you drew 1-1 one, one. yeah yeah we did get a draw um, the game was actually alright um, I think they were both both pretty quiet on the day luckily think, was Ronaldo sent off I believe was it in that game yeah um, I think I think it was that game I mean did, did were you in his head is that what it was I think it must yeah. be that must have shackled him first 45 and his head's gone second half. Um, but no, nah, that, as you said, another good debut for me, like from Southampton and Portsmouth. So, um, playing against good players. You might have had a team full. I think Giggs played in that game, did he, as well? Yeah, it was a pretty, yeah, it was pretty much a full strength team. And this was, I think Tevez played, I think Giggs played, I think, yeah. I think Rooney come off the bench. It went on to win the Champions League and the Premier League. So, to get a 1 1 draw on your there debut, you I don't think you can turn that, turn it's your nose up at that. Eh? Yeah, yeah, and, and while whilst you're at Portsmouth, you know you you were in that England under twenty one side that went to the European Championship final uh, in two thousand and nine, yeah. and I think it's safe to say it was a bit of a, a bit of a battering in the final against a team that had, did have players such as Manuel Neuer, Jerome Boateng, and and, and Meza Özil. Do you know playing against them at that age? Did you realise that they were going to go on and become the players that they actually did? No, it was a strange one because in that tournament we put, they were in our group in that tournament, so we played them in the group stages, and uh, I think we drew and won all. So we going into the final, we knew sort of the team we were playing against anyway, and it just all of a sudden went from they went from like here to here in a game, like because they, they were all obviously they were good players in the mm. first game, but we thought like there's something we can deal with, we can win this, but they just started that game like a house on fire. And, the quality of them. Obviously, Ozil was playing. I think Ozil might have been playing out on the side I was. But he's just so sharp and up, like up, up top, all his decision-making, everything was ahead of everything else. You can see like he was a level above everyone else on the mm. pitch. And uh, in the end, we got battered. But no, that was a good experience as well. So, uh, in August 2009, you, you signed for the Mighty Sky Blues, of course. <laughs> um for half a million pounds, I don't think we've spent that much money since, really, to be honest. Uh, but, you know, was this your own decision? Or I think, you know, it's well documented that Portsmouth, they were in, you know, a bit of turmoil at the time. Was this a case of, of Portsmouth kind of needed you to leave to balance the books or did you want to leave? Or Yeah, there was maybe, as I said before, probably a bit of both. Um, I, I picked up an injury at Portsmouth, broke my leg when I was there, so getting back and had a few loan spells, went to Charlton and QPR and got back there and just just wasn't happening for me. I just didn't really think there was a route back into that first team for me. So um and then Coventry popped up in that in in that summer and I thought it was a good opportunity for me, you know, to start a fresh one again and get away. And obviously Coventry were doing really well. Um and it was a big club. So I was more than happy to go. 
Um, just picking up before I speak a little bit more about Coventry, you know, the, the whole Portsmouth thing with the financial, you know, they ended up going down to League Two. Could you sense something like that was coming or was it kind of like out of the blue? Um, from when I was, uh, well, obviously when I first went there, I knew they were obviously spending big wage on players because of the players that were there. So I think they probably needed success at the time, but I'm trying to think how they did because I was out on loan for most of the next season. Um and then it probably went probably went down a year after that. So it was probably it was probably behind the scenes what was going on. I think something might have happened with the chairman. I'm not too sure, but yeah. Um obviously to do with financial stuff. So it was probably no one else seen it from the outside, but stuff was going on. Yeah. We sent them that way anyway. So I probably got out just before it was it was sort of out then. Yeah. So talking your first two seasons at Coventry, you know, uh, Chris Coleman the first season, we had a we had a bit of a spell where we looked like we could make a run at the playoffs and then yeah. I think we were top of the league under A.D. Boothroyd in the second season. Do you feel that, as a whole, the club, the manager and, and the squad, do you think we kind of underachieved a little bit with the players we had? Yeah, I, I do. But when, when I was first, I think we underachieved massively. Um, the setup was there. You know, obviously, when they were playing at the Rico, they had, they had the setup to go on and do something better. Um, they had a good squad. It was just, just something went falling in, falling into place. But um, and then it sort of filtered away a little bit after that, didn't it? Yeah. Getting relegated in the third season, and then it's sort of been a case for Carl now building and coming back the other way. Um, but for me, I'd like to even get back at the Rico at some point. For me, yeah. Um, no, I loved it. I loved it. I've loved it for time now. Well, obviously, you know, you you've you've kind of made the area your home now, so you yeah, must have, you yeah. must have enjoyed your spell. Yeah. Well, I, um, I found the wife here, so I had to stay, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> once you once you leave, once you once you get to Coventry, you never leave. You never leave. <laughs> um. So final bit about Coventry was, you know, um, the relegation season. Um. I think Andy Fawn, AD Buford left. Andy Fawn come in, and he, he had the last few games of the season, and then, you know, that that eleven twelve season from a fan's perspective, it was a, well, it was a bit of a, a disaster to be honest. I think. I think you know, like you said, there was there was something there for the club to build on, but like you say, it all petered away. Um, did you feel a bit sorry for Andy because he was kind of thrust in as he a manager and he'd never done it before? Yeah, he had a different role at the club, didn't he? Before that, yeah, he was a scout, and yeah. you know, he kind of just got plucked, plucked left field into the manager's hot seat. And, you know, he got relegated. Come in and took the last few games of the season, didn't he? Yeah, and did all right in I can't remember how many games he had, but he did all right then. And then they thought that might be something to build on, but. Looking back, maybe it wasn't the right decision. Like he he kept us in the league then. Probably should have like clean slate in summer. Let's start fresh. Get someone in, something we can go with. But it sort of just stayed where we were. Didn't improve. And as you said, that season was just a write off, really. But yeah, uh, happy to see the Sky Blues back in the Championship and back on the up. I am, mate. Delighted to see him there. As I said, I just wanted just wanted to see him playing at the Rico. Like it's just strange, both from playing at Birmingham a minute. Yeah, it's it is a weird one. But hopefully, you know, that'll sort itself out and we can yeah. carry on on, on the upwards traje- tra- trajectory. Mm. Yeah. So we'll, we'll move on because there's, there's not much that I, I can speak about for Coventry, really. <laughs> and we'll, we'll go to your time at Uddersfield. Yeah. That season probably come as a shock to everyone involved with the club. Um, and obviously, get, finally getting over the line at Wembley. What was it like to play in front of 76,000 fans? Yeah, no, I'd say that was, um, that was probably one of my career highlights, to be honest. Um I played at Wembley a couple of times with the England um, younger age groups, but obviously it wasn't in front of the capacity that, that Wembley's at on a playoff final day. So I'd say that was that is probably my stand that day in my career, just getting that experience of going up through the playoffs in the playoff final. So yeah, that was that was brilliant. What were the celebrations like? So what? I thought they'd have been better. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, so. They'd organised something before the game that we had to go back to a hotel in Huddersfield. So we spent about two and a half, three hours on a coach on the way home after the game to a hotel. Uh, and it was all like sponsors and stuff like that in a hotel. So it wasn't like the wild thing everyone was probably expecting. Yeah. A bit more low key sort of thing. Then we Wait. had the parade and that the next day, which was good. That, that, that was brilliant. Um, but we probably didn't get the big party we wanted. Well, you thought it'd have been a big night out in London after oh. winning at Wembley. You'd have thought, yeah, as soon as those penalties finished, that's the first thing that went through my head. But now he's back on the bus up to other 
So uh, obviously you played a, a couple of times uh, for, for in the Premier League for Huddersfield. I think Alfie mentioned that you played at the Emirates, uh, but there. then. I mean, we then, won't uh, talk too much about it. <laughs> yeah. But, the, but then uh, you come up, because uh, obviously we're, we're students here at Seaside University, and you come up here to Middlesbrough. Um, it, what did you think of, of the town and, and, and the setup and the supporters? And how, how did you feel your time at Middlesbrough went? Like you, you know, we mentioned you only started one game. Did yeah. you feel like you, it could have been more? Or? Strange one for me. Uh, it, it probably won't, it wasn't one of the best. It, like, it's not. For me personally, it wasn't the best just because of in terms of game time and stuff. The club as a whole is a good club and they're a brilliant set of lads there and that they're a really good squad that probably should have got promoted um, that season. Um, I didn't actually see too much of the town because I was travelling in from um, from where I was living just outside Barnsley. I was doing the commute uh, from there. So I didn't actually go into Middlesbrough that often mm. and they train it um, in Darlington. Rockcliffe Park. Yeah. In Rockcliffe Park. So it was going literally straight to there every day. And on game days, I'd go to the stadium. So that was literally all I'd really seen of that. Mm. But um, in terms of the playing side, it wasn't really my best experience, just purely because of game time, to be honest. Is it just frustrating, you know, you know, making 10, 15 minute appearances off the bench yeah. every now and then? It's. Well, that's it. Like, I went there hoping to finish that season with like. A run of games um, before, like, because I'd, I'd, my contract was up at Huddersfield that summer. So I'd gone there, like, thinking oh, I'll get a few games here, put myself back in the shot window, might have a few more options come the summer. But as you said, I only ended up starting one game. A lot of the appearances were off the bench, so it didn't really uh, do too well for me. What was uh, what was Tony Pulis like? He was, he was all right. Um, he's, he's, he's got his set way of doing things, you know. Like, yeah. He probably still doing now what he did when he first started managing. You know? Yeah. Um, but with me, like, yeah, like person to person, brilliant. Um, obviously, for the football, I, just, I didn't really get a chance to do anything. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll fast forward to probably a bit more memorable time in your career at, at Sheffield United. It looked like a special season, you know, especially from the outside. It was a, a, like a tight knit group and led by a fantastic manager in, in Chris Wilder. Did you know that you were going to get promotion with that team, and was it like a feeling amongst um, the squad? Yeah, I think it was. I think everyone had the feeling, but no one wanted to say it. When it was getting towards probably just after Christmas, like I think there was a belief there that, like, yeah, we could do it this year. Like, we've got a good enough squad to to really do it. And then I think it got there was a there was a a week a game we played. I think it was that Leeds game you mentioned. You know the one we won one nil. Yeah, hmm. that was the one when we beat them then. I think we we didn't know obviously, but that was when we thought right we can do it now. And that sort of defined the season that went. I think. Mm. I mean, I've, I've just got to ask. I can't I can't remember the exact game, but I think you said it was Stoke, didn't you, Alex? And once you once you got promotion, I think you were top, weren't you? Stoke. And yeah. th did the celebration start as soon as you got promoted? Because I mean, the the results yeah. did take a bit of a hit. Yeah, yeah. It was it Easter weekend. Yeah. yeah, I think it was it Ipswich you played, wasn't it? And it that it, must have been some atmosphere. Oh, I think. Oh no no it's Richard. over the Easter weekend I can't remember who we played but remember we we come back to the stadium because we watched Leeds against Brentford Leeds had to win I think yeah Do you remember the game when they let the lad run through and score Villa Villa yeah Sorry. yeah yeah that game there um sort of what got us promoted so it was, after that it, it was it that uh, talking about promotion with Sheffield United uh, we we did we trolled through Twitter. Uh, oh, some good bits on there, isn't there? Yeah, very good. All I'm going to say, <laughs> all I'm going to ask, Robbie Williams, Angels, and how many points did you sunk at that point? Oh, it depends what time of night it was. I was, when, uh, I, was in the, I was in the sloggies by then, wasn't I? There's some there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that was brilliant, mate. That, that was with the club. They got the whole... Um, everyone who worked at the ground, everyone who works in the club, so that was just for the people... So it was good to share it with everyone in one night sort of thing. But um, yeah, it was pretty wild. So I definitely looked it. Yeah. Is that up there one of the worst hangovers you've ever had? <laughs> oh, what? So we did that and then did the parade the next day. And I think we had a, a day and then we were going to Vegas to celebrate. 
What was Vegas like? Uh, it was mental, mate. So it was all sort of rolled into one that week. Yeah. For like a day in between to sort your bag out for Vegas. And then we <laughs> but yeah, no, other, the whole thing, mate, was brilliant. Other than your, other than your wedding week and, and birth of your child, would you say best week of your life? Yeah. Both of the promotions. Obviously, the Huddersfield one's a bit different. Um, maybe that was to do with like the squads and that. Sheffield United boys, it was all sort of a British squad. It, re- it really did seem like a, a such a good camaraderie yeah. and it, it seemed awesome. yeah it just seemed like the perfect set up yeah it, it definitely was yeah so uh finally you know um I'm, I'm not just saying this as well I, I i know some sheffield united fans and they were they were genuinely disappointed to see you leave um did you feel like you know you went to sheffield united and you met you i think you probably possibly no disrespect exceeded expectations on a personal level did you feel like you deserved a new contract? Um, do you know what? I think if we did, didn't get promoted, I'd have, I'd have, I'd, I maybe would have got one. But I understood completely why. Um, there was no hard scenes or anything, especially after promotion. I'd, I'd gone there and we did what we did. There was, like, I loved it there. I've got not, not a bad word to say about it. Um, obviously, I was disappointed not to, but the reasons behind it, I completely can see why. Like, you know, hmm. you go to the Premier League, you need to freshen it up, you want younger players, blah, blah, blah. That's what happens in football. So, from that side of you, it's completely accepted by me. Um, but, obviously, if I did, I'd have loved to have stayed, but it just wasn't meant to be. Well, at least you got the trip to Vegas in there before you left anyway. Right, yeah. That was the main <laughs> thing. 